Hi, my name is Tristan Kimpel, and on this edition of Turbo Talks, we're going to talk about our repairs process. So we get questions all the time, like, where do I send my turbo for service? How much is it going to cost? What needs to be replaced? And of course, those are all valid questions. So we decided we'd put together this video to discuss with you exactly what you need to do, where you need to send it, and even some little tips on how to pack it properly. So let's talk about some of the signs that your turbo may need to come in for service. Now, Obviously, if you've sucked something into the compressor wheel or something in the engine's let go, whether internally or, you know, maybe it's in your piping, a piece of piston has gone through the turbine wheel, then, you know, it's a clear sign that you need to send the turbo in for service. Uh, you want to inspect it, make sure, that, you know, the extent of the damage, uh, especially before you keep running it because you could cause more damage to the unit. Um, other times there's smaller signs. Maybe you have a slight oil leak on your turbo. Maybe there's a um, little oil on the compressor side or a little oil on the turbine side. And of course, you know, that may be a sign that it needs to come in. However, it may also just be a sign that there's something in the setup that's not quite right. So in a lot of these cases, the best thing to do is to call us here at Precision or you can call your dealer if you purchase it through a particular dealer or distributor and just ask a few questions like hey I think my turbo needs to come in for service and explain to us what it's doing a lot of times we can talk to you over the phone and determine maybe it does or maybe it doesn't and we can get you headed in the right direction so of course part of that direction is the RMA process so the RMA form that's a form that you fill out to send with your turbo back to us so that we can process your turbo into our system to put it through the service department, the sales department, and ultimately back to you. It's a very important form and I want to stress that you need to call us to obtain the RMA form before sending your turbo in as this will definitely aid in the process in getting your turbo to our service department and back to you in a timely fashion. To obtain the form, you can simply call us here at Precision Turbo, 855-996-7832, or contact your dealer or distributor if the turbo is less than a year old. We'll be able to email that form to you, which you will fill out, put in the box with the unit, and ship back to us. It's a fairly simple process, but it is a very important one. So, when you're sending the turbo back, obviously you've called and you've got your RMA and you're ready to box it up. So, how do you box it up and how do you package a turbo properly? Well, it's really going to depend on how you're sending it back. Are you sending us back a full turbo or maybe you've pulled your turbine housing off or maybe you're going to send back just a CHRA. Each one of these requires a slight bit different approach at packaging, but we really want to make sure that you package it properly so that your wheels and housings don't get damaged during shipping. It's pretty simple with some household items. Um, you're going to need, obviously, a cardboard box, preferably two inches uh, in size bigger than the turbo. So if you measure your turbo width, depth, and height, you're going to need a box approximately two inches bigger in all directions. If you go too much bigger than that, you're going to have to use an excessive amount of packing material to really secure it. So, a lot of people, uh, the first thing they do is they want to use some of this big bubble. Um, this is great when you're shipping lightweight items. Unfortunately, when you're shipping bulky items like a turbo, the weight of it will actually press down during shipping and pop it. Now there's no cushion between the turbo and the box. It slides around and it has potential to either get damaged or even fall out of the box. It's much better when, used, when shipping these units to use the smaller bubble. This has more surface area across the smaller bubbles. It'll hold the weight a lot better. The other thing that you can use too is uh, some of the simple just kind of foam. You can get this out of packages you've gotten from maybe someplace else. 
Um, or you can go to a packing store and they sell these materials. The other thing is you can use cardboard, you can use old newspapers, um, people have used old rags and towels, but the most important thing is going to be to protect the wheels themselves first. So if you're not going to send in the whole turbo, get some bubble, roll it up, and make sure you secure it around the turbine wheel and tape it up real, real good first. Then, of course, you know, whether it's a CHRA and you do dope both wheels, or if it's maybe just a turbine housing, you secure your turbine wheel. You're going to want to wrap the whole turbo in a bag. Um, it doesn't matter if this is a garbage bag, if this is some sort of bag from a store, but you want to wrap it in a bag. We want to try to keep any debris and contaminants out of the turbo. Um, this especially, uh, you know, case when people they send back a used turbo, it might be leaking a little bit of oil. If it's not bagged up, the oil is going to leak through your packaging material into the cardboard, soften it up, and potentially fall out the bottom of your box. So you really don't want to do that. So bag it up, contain it, wrap it up real good, and then of course once this is bagged up and wrapped and you go to put it in the box, like I said, cardboard uh, works really good packing paper or newspaper and just pack it as tight as you can just to prevent the you know them from moving around in the box. One of the things I want to talk about popcorn. Don't use it. It's uh this is not really designed to be used to hold a substantial amount of weight. When you put this underneath the turbo, two things happen. One, the turbo crushes right through this stuff and ends up coming through the box. Uh, second thing is this when it starts mixing with oil and fluids that are coming off the turbo from your car uh, It starts to break down. It gets slimy and greasy. It gets all over the turbo um, And just really causes a mess So it, it's best to really stay away from packing peanuts if at all possible and just try to use something else foam That's gonna be the way the, the best way to send it in um, that's the way we send turbos out to customers. They're actually foam encased. And if you go to a lot of FedEx stores or UPS places or some of the pack and ship stores, uh, they will be able to actually, they can package it in foam for you. Uh, the one thing that we ask, please do not wrap this in a bag and try to use expanding foam from the store. Uh, when you do that, it will eat through the plastic bag, it will get all over your turbo, and it's pretty much impossible to get all of it off um, Yes, it can be uh, taken off with acetone and other cleaners. Uh, no, we're not going to spend that much time to clean up your turbo. It's going to get sent back to you. So, you know, make sure you pack it well. Uh, make sure that if you are in the United States, I highly suggest that you insure the package uh, with your turbo when you send it to us. I'd insure it for a realistic value, meaning if it's a $1,400 turbocharger, don't insure it for $2,500. You're going to pay X amount of dollars more for insurance, and you're not going to recoup that money if the turbocharger is damaged, uh, because they're going to contact and want to know what the actual price of the unit was. For international customers, this is uh, one of those things that's very, very important. If you are sending a turbo for service and it's coming international, so anywhere outside the United States, um, you do not want to declare more than a $200 value on your turbo. Uh, the reason why is because when this turbo ships and it comes to the US, it's going to come through customs, there's taxes and duties uh, as well as brokerage fees when it comes through. Uh, if it comes through for more than $200, the charges associated with it will be charged back to you. So it's just one of those things, if you're sending it in, $200 maximum uh, as far as declared value. And of course, when we ship it back to you, uh, we always make sure that you know it's taken care of in, in such a way that you're gonna get the product back um, insured, you know, so you don't have to worry about loss or damage on its, on its return. And of course, uh, Everybody always wants to know, well, how much money is it going to cost me to repair my turbo? Well, it's kind of an open-ended question. 
Because just like your vehicle, for instance, when you take it to a mechanic, they're not going to be able to estimate the cost of your repairs until they physically see it. So it's the same with a turbocharger. We can give you a basic rebuild price. So $180 basic rebuild cost, but that's only where it starts. You know, uh, so we really have to get the turbocharger here to see it. Um, one of those things, you know, people want to know, well, how much does it cost to replace a wheel? How much does it cost to replace a bearing? We can give you an exact price of that bearing or that wheel, but the problem is without seeing it, we don't know the extent of the damage. And if we quote you for a $260 wheel and the turbo gets here and in fact the shaft is damaged and the bearings are damaged, it may possibly be a $1,000 um, and you're in for a big shock, you know, when you hear the price. Um, so it's best to send them in to us, let us go through them completely. You're not obligated to go ahead and purchase a new unit or repair your unit once we give you a quote. You can pay the return shipping and get the unit back if you feel like it's too costly to repair. One of the last things uh, is always uh, lead time. Everybody wants to know how long is it going to take? So when you ship your turbo into us, it's typically about two weeks on the lead time. Um, a lot of times they'll say 10 to 14 business days. Um, reason being is when you ship your turbo into us, it's going to take about a day from the time we receive it until the time it's actually checked in and taken back to our service department. Once it's back in our service department, the guys have multiple turbos they're working on at any given time, so it may take a day or two for them to actually get it apart, inspect it, and find out what's going on. And of course, you know, if there's something that they need clarification on or they have questions about while tearing it down, they may reach out to you or they may reach out to a salesperson that's dealt with you in the past to ask some questions. So, you know, sometimes this can take a day or two for them to get this process done. Um, once the turbocharger is quoted out and we're ready to uh, move ahead, uh, we get payment from you on it. And then, of course, this goes to our, from our service department. It's going to go up to our assembly guys who are going to take care of rebuilding, you know, your unit. Typically, we're looking at a couple days there, anywhere from five to seven days total between the cleaning process and rebuilding process. And then, of course, a couple days in transit back to you. If you're going to send your turbo in, um, please, you know, make sure that you, you don't need it uh, right away. If you need it in a week's time, you know, it's probably going to take a little bit longer than that. We do offer priority services, um, but the one thing about priority services, you have to overnight the turbo in for it to be considered a priority, and the turbo has to leave our facility overnight to be a priority. So if you really need it in a pinch and you've got a week's time in between races, overnight the turbo to us with an RMA. We'll overnight it back to you. And uh, as soon as we get it taken care of, and uh, that will be our, our priority process. In closing, the whole process is fairly simple if you follow a couple guidelines such as getting your RMA form and packing it properly. One last thing on packing it properly. Please, if you pack this properly, it's going to get to us. We're going to be able to get it serviced and get it back to you. If it's not packaged properly, you do run the risk of increasing your cost for repair from damage during shipping. So it's, a, it's very important to make sure that you package them very well. On that note, we're going to get out of here. So we'll see you next time on Turbo Talks. Have a good one.